Hey, welcome to the podcast domination show where we help you launch, grow, monetize, and dominate the podcasting space. This is a show where we believe that if you can get attention with your podcast, you can influence someone. And if you can influence someone, you can get them to take massive action. And if you can get someone to do that, you, my friend, can dominate. I'm Luis Diaz, your host and founder of Podcast Domination, and I'm your guide. Let's go. All right, welcome back to the Podcast Domination Show. If you're a new listener, then in a nutshell, this is my testing ground to help you launch, grow, and monetize and dominate your show, your podcast specifically. Um, On this show, we help people with their podcasts. Uh, Two biggest questions I tackle here is how do I grow the dang thing? And then how do I make it work for my business, uh, monetizing personal branding? Um, How do I make it work for uh, achieving those goals, right? So on this episode, I've got my friend with me, Daxi Perez. Daxi is a podcasting expert. He is an impressive fellow. If we had to put it simply, like we are competitors, but we're good friends. Like he helps me out a lot. I help him out a lot. We, uh, in this episode, we tackle really how to find other shows to be a guest on, how to vet them, uh, where are the best websites, what are some of the best uh, practices when it comes to going about being a guest and getting on other shows to build your personal brand, to increase your realm of influence, to get your name out there more, and all that good stuff. So you're going to learn a lot in this episode. I really highly recommend you go to his Facebook group. It is in the show notes. But if you just go on Facebook and type in legacy podcasting for personal brands and influencers, that is not the exact name, but you should be able to find it with that way. Either way, it's in the show notes. I'm a proud member of that Facebook group. Daxi is an expert. You'll learn a ton from him. So without further ado, enjoy my episode with my buddy, Daxi Perez. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm here with my friend, Lewis. We were supposed to get a little closer. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to, we did a live like a little while back and it yeah. fell out. It's but so, if you so guys bad. don't know who Lewis is, and we're pretty excited, we're going to be talk about uh, guest secrets. So how to be a good guest on our podcast, the whole process, how to find them, what to say, how to be a good guest. If you guys don't know who Lewis is, he's a badass. Like he runs a badass agency, works with some big people. I'll let you kind of explain if you can brag right now, if you want to, dude. <laughs> this is a brag. the open bragging time. All right, yes. cool. Um, so I do the same thing Daxi does, but uh, it's funny because I'm more in the fitness space, but uh, I guess some of the people who I work with, maybe you know, maybe you don't, but it would be Joel Marion, so CEO of uh, BioTrust, Vince Del Monte, Steve Weatherford, he's a former NFL player. Who else? Who else? Kind of bigger names that might be out there. Celeste Bonin, former yeah. WWE. They all they all make a lot of money from their podcast. Fucking, yeah, they make good money from their podcasts and uh, and yeah, Dan Locke. Well. Dan Locke, I forgot about Dan. Damn. Like he's a big yeah, one, dude. He's a big one. He's an awesome dude. Yeah, he's, uh, that's my Sifu. You guys know martial arts <laughs> or what? What is it? Yeah, like Sensei Master or something like that. Yeah, he's a big Bruce Lee fan. I saw him recently. He's actually, it's funny because his in person, Dan Lock is so much cooler. Really? Than online. Oh, yeah, he's, he's like a sweet, he's like a teddy bear. Uh, a lot of people are saying Lock, that too. Go to Lock House next month, I think. So that'll be fun. Podcast, Value Town, let's go. Whoever, whoever said that, appreciate <laughs> that. Okay, cool. So, firstly, we want to talk about what was, what's the first topic, dude? <laughs> I think it's like how to find good podcasts to be on. There's like over, I think it's over like 500,000 actual podcasts in the iTunes directory. And there's probably, I don't know, like a thousand at least that everyone here can get on. And that's a lot of shit. Like that's a lot of like airtime. That's a lot of promo PR. So I think like, so step one is like how to find them, right? I think Daxia, you've probably already done a couple of things on this, but we'll go through kind of the the four main places that I personally look for. Yeah. Cause everybody, you, know. you talk more than me. Everybody already hears me talking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, I'll be watching these lives too. They're pretty good actually. <laughs> so, um, so, so place number one, you probably already know this, but it is iTunes. Uh, I think Dax, you'll post the link. I sent a yeah, link. Yeah, to I can it. share the screen real quick. All right, cool. So um, some of you may know this already. Some of you may not, but uh, iTunes actually will, has a whole directory of like a list of all the podcasts that they have in their directory, which not everyone knows, but like I stumbled upon this like, uh, like a couple months ago. And I have no idea how I even found it, but um, I guess we can kind of go through a demo. Yeah. So, like, so this please. is like the main page. Yeah. 
and has all the categories, pretty much what you see in iTunes, but in the actual browser, it's easier to navigate. Yeah. So um, for like, do like a live example, like what are some people who are in the group who have podcasts? Uh, let's categories? just say fitness. Let's right. just say fitness. All right, cool. So we'll go to the, so if you want to find a fitness show, you would go to health, you go to health and fitness, and then it's going to pull up all the shows, pretty much A to B or A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be small list. Yeah, that'd be small list. <laughs> but okay. So there's a lot of sorting that happens now. However, this is where like a VA or somebody who is maybe you're training on training under you who wants to like just get their hands dirty and help you out. This is where they come in, right? So what I would do is what I do with my own team is I have them go through this list. If I'm looking for like if I'm looking to get on specific podcasts, maybe for like men over 40 who are looking for fat loss, I have them scrape this entire list. So they click in to everyone. So you can click in anyone you want. The popular list. Yeah, yeah exactly. Popular podcasts. We'll start with those first. My friend's actually going to interview this guy, Mind Pumps. Oh, yeah, they're three. They're cool. Yeah, we have a couple of shows with them. They're awesome dudes. Mindset, wow. Yeah, dude, they're, they're big time. Um, so if you want to be on guests on this show or if someone was doing this for you, let's just say you hired someone to do this, whatever. What you would tell them to look for is, A, look at, look at these episodes and see if they have any guests because some shows don't have guests. So <laughs> if you pitch them, it's going to look really fucking bad. So look at whatever, A, look at if they have guests. So boom, so like you can tell if you click into one. I know these guys have guests, so like here, Dr. Gabriel, Gabriel yes. Lyons. So we know they have guests. That's good. Cool. Mark Bell. Um, number two, I would look for when was their last <laughs> posting day? So obviously they just posted like two days ago. So they're relevant because sometimes like you'll click in here and there'll be um, like a show from like 2016. So I think that's one thing we got to make sure we look out for. Number three, I would probably click podcast website just to make sure they're legit. They have a good like if you get on a show, you want them to promote it, right? You want it to look good. So that's number three. I would say you definitely want to look, check out the podcast website, and then right here, podcast like, website. Boom. boom. And they, I think, isn't there? Wasn't there a one you could actually say connect with hosts or something like that? They took that away. I think they did. There used to be like another one that was like um, contact. I, yeah, yeah. There was a contact before. So but that that is guys. We talked about this last night. That's why you lo- use listen notes. Boom. Yeah. So Oops. like, let's just. <laughs> yeah so yeah. we have this podcast we like them the va likes them <laughs> uh you search them in listen notes this podcast pops up i'm gonna pull up this on my phone real quick um right mm-hmm. here this little mail button just right click copy email address paste it somewhere Ad- demon who's demon. demon probably add i would say probably so actually doug i know the producer of the show that's doug See, it's just a little hack. You guys can go to Doug at Mind Pump Media too. <laughs> I can't believe his email. But yeah, um, if you wanted to pitch him on being that show, for instance, you could go to Doug, talk to him. But uh, yeah, that's an easy hack. So find him in iTunes, put him into listen notes, and then you're off to the races. Yeah. If you guys are on live, give me hashtag live so more people could see this. This can go out to more people. So we went over that method to find guests. Obviously, listen notes is another method. Super cool. Um, or to, not to find guests, to find like shows podcasts. to be on. Yeah. Is there any other methods you use? Um, so I'm really big on two other ones. So that number one is Facebook groups like this. There's like there's tons out there. So I would to be interviewed on Facebook groups. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this takes a little bit of hustle. Like you have to get in there, figure out who's who, who's got a good podcast, and then obviously, like I'm sure you talked about here, is provide a shit ton of value. So commenting on their stuff leaving them a review yeah, yeah. for their show and then listening to it. Those are the three big things right there. Yeah. Commenting, leaving a review, listening to the show so that you know what they're looking for. Right. So I know this guy is like, he's looking, he really big on like gut health and let's just say he, you know, his last episode was good. And he got a lot of great feedback. If I'm a guy who knows gut health in the fitness industry, I'm going to pitch him on that. I'm like, Hey man, like, you know, I've done this, this, and this. I'm an expert in gut health. I'd love to get in the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny because part of my thing when we reach out to people to be on their show yeah. is we send them a screenshot of a review we made for them too. Oh, like, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Like so, that. hey, uh, love your show. I just sent you a screenshot. So it builds reciprocity. Right. So they feel like, you know, they have to give you some sort of value back. <laughs> At least respond, if <laughs> anything. respond, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good way to – so let's talk about the next part. Let's say Mind Pump. You want to be on their show. How do you start that, that outreach? How you start the combo? Okay. So – Step one, you definitely got to listen to like what they're looking for. Oh, what's like, up, Kiana, by the way? What up, Kiana? Hashtag live. <laughs> um, I would like for those guys, like it's a really big podcast. They're 
super selective. So if you're going on a show like that, you've got to pitch them on something that's relevant and high value. So knowing that their audience is a lot of trainers and a lot of really, really fact checking <laughs> fitness people, um, you really got to know your shit. And you also got to uh, just know what they want, right? So listening to like three or four episodes is going to do you a world of good. That's number one. So yeah, I see it. probably like the biggest thing right there. So we want to talk about kind of going into the pitch. Yeah. yeah. As like how we, how we'd write it. So number one, your title's got to be really, really high value. The so email title? The email title. Yeah, 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 100%. Let's try to give an example here of like, you can be like podcast guests, but they probably get that all the time. But you've got to be something that like listen, you've listened to on their episode, a recent one, and then use that as the hook. So if I knew they were talking about gut health for men over 40, you, I would put like, I'm an expert in this, let's so say like gut health for men over 40. Because I know they just talked about that in like two or three episodes ago. So I would use their, uh, what well, their, their content from that first podcast or most recent podcast in the title. Right. And then I would, I wouldn't talk about really me until like the bottom of the, F, bottom of the, uh, of the email top of the thing there is going to be really just high value. Right. So just kind of like you got like the sales page, you got like really relevant title, shocking title, and then going into it, it's going to be really just over delivering on value. Hey, I heard you guys were. I saw, listened to X, Y, and Z episode. I also left a review. I've been a fan for who oh God knows. Um, and I'm also, and I've also helped this many people achieve X, Y, and Z. Let's just say I'm an expert in fitness, health and fitness. So I think that would be for me, like that's what we do ours. So it's like hook, super, super good value about what you can deliver on the show. Yeah. And some bullet points, like, like bullet points would be talking points. So we can talk about gut health for men over 40. We can talk about uh, different types of, bacteria in the microbiome, whatever. Um, and then the last part, I would say like, here's my um, one cheater. Should we talk about next? Yeah. Here's my one cheater in case you want to know a little bit more about me. Um, would love to hear what you guys are, are, have in mind. Yeah. I, and I'm actually going to pull up a one sheet example, guys. Perfect. But um, I'll use my friend, Katya, because uh, that's kind of how I base off what we do for some clients. But that's very true how when you're reaching out, you want to kind of position yourself as unique and say you want to quickly position yourself as an authority too. Like if there's something you can brag about, brag about it early. Like yeah. numbers work. Big time. Like zero to 100K. Yeah. Or like I have an audience of 100, like something big that you can like leverage, whether it's a name, a number, definitely leverage. Even if you're like working with someone. That's mm -hmm. big. You well, can I, say that too. I leveraged the shit out of that when I was first getting started. Like all of my DMs with people be like, Hey, I work for, well, I run Ben Bukowski's podcast and everyone in the fitness industry knew who that was. was like, Oh, you run his. So yo, was, that's the same thing. Super like easy. That's how I got a lot of clients. I say, I work with Steven Larson Bingo. and he's on stage at click funnels. And yeah. then all these people are in click funnels and they're like, Oh, they you drop. automatically at the top of the chain, you know? Yeah. yeah so, you name drop like crazy. I mean, that's, that's a huge one numbers as well. If you've lost like, Let's say you lost like 300 pounds. Like that's what I would put the title as. Or that would be like my first line in the headline or in the, in yeah. the, in the email. Because you got to think like this is the hook that they're going to use for the show. So if your hook sucks for them, then their hook for the show is going to suck. Yeah. So you, if you have a good hook for them, then it's, a, it's almost a no-brainer for them. Yeah. Um, guys, let's get a hashtag value town. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> hashtag yeah, right. I'm, I'm definitely going to rewatch this. Yeah. What, Samson, what say. hack for looking at, if you want to find really good titles and like really good uh, hooks, go to like any kind of TMZ magazine, muscle and fitness, any of these like really gaudy, like celebrity magazines or websites. Gossipy. And, yeah, yeah. Gossipy. Um, other ones, like I'd say in our space, more like Gizmundo, Entrepreneur, Forbes, those guys want to write titles. So like I like to use the, when I was writing sales copy in the fitness space, I would just um I would grab a bunch of magazines like health and fitness ones and just copy the titles and try and make my own title. Um, so yeah, copy the titles from those big websites and that'll those are usually good hooks. That's genius. So that reminds me of Russell Brunson when uh, he was showing photos when he first started out and, and then back in the day he had boxes of like um, like direct mail. Really? Of like people selling shit and he would just always look through them and like <laughs> see what elicited responses. That's so true, dude. I mean, um, let me show real quick guys, share my screen. So this is a good one sheet. So she has a good podcast bio. Um, she says who she is, what she does. There's numbers in there, uh, what she's a founder of. Very, very good. How to pronounce her name. Not a lot of people have that problem. So that's not important. All of her general contact information. That's what you want. 
Um, and this is Katya at reachandmakemillions.com if you guys want to check it out. She has free gifts for her listeners and attendees. So that's all there mm-hmm. for the person show you're going to be on. You can just tell them straight up what if they have to include links, topics and questions, ideas. So this helps guests. I personally love when I'm going to interview someone. I think it, they make it so easy. Oh Yeah, yeah. yeah. when they give you pr- uh, promotional bullet points or they tell you in- questions that you can ask them. I love that. What, what's, who's this? Who's Richie make, Richie make millions? Oh, my. this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> copy this. Yeah, this is what I copy. <laughs> Katya is really cool. She talks about uh, time. She does time management for big entrepreneurs. She oh. gives you photography to use. Uh, she gives you her logo, certifications. She'll give you past interviews she'll be, she's been on. Wow. So if you want to research live streams, workshops, uh, and links to all of them as well. It's like a sales page for you to get on the show. Like that would kill me. That would knock me out. I'm like, yeah. She's on. She's on. Yeah. She put this like one this would, into that. Yeah. Like, there's other blog, but like a lot of stuff. This makes it almost like a no brainer for people to say yes to you. So, um, that's a great, uh, Katya at reach and make millions.com. You can see her press sheet. Actually, I don't even know if she it's publicizes a, it's a it. a living web page too. That's interesting too. Cause I feel like, like if you do a PDF like I was doing, yeah, it's a lot harder to change the dang thing when you you when you change. Because obviously, yeah. you get more followers, you need to get more a bigger email list. Yeah, I like that a lot. So I'm stealing. Cool. That. So mm-hmm. I can send you a link for that. It's a special Please. link. You can't Please find it online. Oh, really? get out <laughs> yeah. of here. Okay. Uh, yeah, she sent that. she sent me that when I was an interviewer, and I'm like, this is badass. I'm taking this. <laughs> uh, so how to be a good guest on podcast? We'll we'll do that, and then we'll wrap up. Cool. What is the main I want to hear from you. Like what is the most important things if you're going to be on a podcast, like to keep in mind, I think you're looking at like, if you're, you guys are most hosts, most of you hosts, right? What do you like when a podcast would bring in your, but if, even if you're host, you still want to be on another podcast. Damn right. Yeah. To, oh, yeah. To get more listeners. So definitely if you're, so if I'm a, like, usually I'm hosting, I like the person to bring some freaking action. Like I, I want them to know their story so I don't have to pull it out of them. So number one, you got to know your story. Like you've got to know all the high points, Leave out the boring points that most people don't like. Um, and that comes from repetition and practice and like yeah. working with a coach. Like I actually have a friend who's a coach, a speaking coach, and he helps people with their story arc. And it's big. Yeah. It's, What's actually big too is like when you talk to more audiences, like if your story doesn't match their story, then they'll be less interested. True. So if it's like a mom talking and I'm listening to her and I can't relate with her story, then I won't be interested. So you're, you, you're toned out. You're zoned out. Exactly. So try to use elements of your story that matches the audience you're talking to. So yeah. That's great. That's a great point. Yeah. So know your story. Know the audience coming in. Like I hate when people come on. Like I've had one or two people do this. Come on a show. I'm like, so who's the audience? I'm like, dude. <laughs> you know? And so know the audience. Do your homework. Uh, and just listen to the podcast. And that's typically will tell you who the audience is. Uh, and then last but not least, I would say you really want to have some tangible takeaways for the audience. So your story and then tangible takeaways like teaching people very specific things that, that they would be interested in. So, for instance, like this, my goal was to come on here and teach you guys how to find the stinking podcast, the links, the exact script to say, that kind of stuff. You can you can take that and, and like you can use it. So I would say that. And then um, really, and then all, last but not least. So it's something that interview, you, you familiar with Tom Schwab? Sounds familiar. Cool. He's a, he, he's a the CEO of um, inter, interview valet. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's, you he's, interviewed him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I interviewed him. Yeah. So okay. one of the things his team does is for every podcast he's on, they will make us like a, a, like a very little copy and paste a webpage. And it'll be like interviewvalet.com forward slash podcast success secrets. Oh, you know I mean? okay. So your audience can go there. You'll yeah. have a picture of your face. And he'll have a lead magnet down below. Yes. So if you have click funnels, which I'm sure most of you guys do, I would take make a page. You can copy and paste it, or you can basically duplicate it, right? When you go on a show, so if I go on Daxi's show, I'm gonna have his picture of his artwork, and then I'm going to have a, a lead magnet for you guys there. Yeah. So when they get on the page, they know like they oh yeah, like I know I'm here, I'm in the right place because I see Daxi. So it's congruent. Yeah, super congruent. Um yeah. and also like it would be like website domain forward slash name of the podcast. Yeah. And what, then have a lead magnet. What's up, Sonia? Sonia's a badass. Sonia, what up? Yeah. Just saw her speak recently in a mastermind. Oh, really? Um, James Smiley's, yeah. Yeah, I actually do that too. You, do? Um, you can do it with WordPress too. Yeah. But uh, like I, we're on a summit and our lead magnet is mm-hmm. legacypodcasting.com slash their summit name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it has their logo, but then it also has our, hey, whatever attendees, yeah. here's your little gift. I love that. I love that. 
So yeah, I would say another big element of being a good guest on a show is uh, obviously having your storyline. Mm-hmm. Like, but a lot of it, I would say this is in general, if you're creating content, is you really want to know how to, a few key elements is like causing controversy isn't, or being controversial isn't bad That's at times. Huge. That's huge, yeah. Some yeah. people want to be yes men. Yeah. Like you actually want to have some friction. I was interviewing one of my clients who's a WWE former wrestler. And she was saying like, they have storylines for all those rest, all those wrestling matches. I, I've been, dude, dude lately, lately like I've been watching it. Not because like, I like watching it as a consumer because <laughs> like, it's so simple Yeah, and they make it that way on purpose because yeah. it really hits like a primal part of people's like psychology. I'll have to post that. I mean, if you went through the whole storyline, like how they set it up, like the, everything, she was giving me all these different names, how they call it. Yeah, I'll we'll have to share. I'll share with that episode yeah. with you. That's a really cool episode. Yeah, there's always like a bad guy. There's always a good. There's always an antagonist. And so yeah, uh, it's cool. I yeah, won't, I won't waste some more time. But yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a big thing is knowing how to you know agitate people's problems and then presenting a solution mm-hmm. is what I say. It's like you know freely explaining their situation and then saying like, all right, this is like what people used to think. This is what you used to think, and then this is the new way to think. And that's yeah. how you really like you know, get people to the latch on. They're like, oh shit, I never heard that before. So yeah. Yeah, I think one guy is really good, two good guys really good at that. Donald Miller from StoryBrand and then Gary Gunderson. Okay. Gary Gunderson. Okay. Both, I bought his book like that. Donald Miller? Or? Uh, no, no Derek, Gary Gunderson. Okay. Because he's all about finance for entrepreneurs, how it's different from your normal like nine to five guy. Um, and Donald Miller is just an expert in story. Expert. He like does like the marketing campaigns to, like presidents. Okay. When they're like, trying to run for preferred presidency. It's crazy. So he knows the stuff. Donald Miller? Donald Miller. Okay. Story brand podcast. Yeah. I know his book has been blowing up. Yeah. Too. It's like two or three years old too. It's crazy. I'm like, you guys, in fact, I heard about it like in 2016. I just, I it's should good. probably listen to it because I hate reading. Me too. I have so many, I have so many books, guys. Like this is why I'm an audio guy. Yeah, me like, too. <laughs> like is, yeah, go ahead. I don't know what it is about books, dude. It's just, uh, can't read them. No. They look good on my shelf. Yeah. But I'm thinking about here's the thing I'm thinking about doing: sending them off to give them to my clients because they're going to use it more than me. Very and, true, and it makes me look good because I'm giving up. But I don't want to give it away because I spent money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, but um, and I'm too lazy to resell them. So yeah, I'm just give them my clients. They'll love me. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, if you made it, whoever's here right now, you're a boss. Uh, if you made it this far, give me hashtag replay hashtag Valley Bomb, and then uh, we'll be doing more lives like this in the future at the Hive. Yes, at the high. Live at the high. We had a lot more people uh, last night. Maybe it's because I was doing a screen share, like a training stuff. Maybe because it's a Sunday. Oh. Yeah. yeah, days are a thing. Shit. To me, <laughs> like, every day feels the same. <laughs> same like, I'm yeah. like, wait, Sunday? Like, okay. Uh, to other people, it's different. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning on. Whoever's here, you're a boss. Oh, Leanne, new credit ninja, you're a boss. All yeah. right. Peace out. Later, guys. See ya. Hey, what's up, Lewis again, and I get asked this question a lot, so I wanted to answer it here for you in a unique manner. And that question is, Lewis, what exactly do you do? How do you help podcasters? What exactly do you and what does podcast domination really help with? Well, instead of me sitting here and telling you all the amazing stuff about us, I thought it'd be fun and interesting for you guys to hear what our clients are saying. So here you go. Please enjoy Lewis literally makes my life so much easier. All I have to do is record my content. I don't have to worry about editing it. I don't have to worry about writing show notes. I don't have to create any of my graphics to promote it. He literally does everything for me. We hired Lewis to kind of help us set up the podcasts and for us to put our content out and kind of grow our brand. And all I really have to say, it's been a huge success. It's been really easy. Lewis and his whole team have made the whole process easy. From Setting it up originally, which with podcasts is kind of intimidating and there's a lot of things that if you're not really, and if you don't know a lot about the platform, that it's very time consuming. So Lewis made all of that easy. In the beginning, I'm not going to lie, I was completely overwhelmed, confused, stressed out because I went on YouTube trying to figure out how to set up a successful podcast. And actually going on YouTube, I was just bombarded by so much information that I just wanted to give up on the idea. And then I met a good friend of ours that introduced me to Lewis and we hit it off. And he just said to me, it's really, really simple. I will take care of everything for you. I think what Lewis has done for me has made it seem so painless. 
he has took my idea and saved me money, he saved me time and energy, and more importantly, he's made my Persistence Factor podcast sound professional. Well, I hope you enjoyed those sound bites as much as I enjoyed putting them together. <laughs> if you have any questions about how we can help you grow, launch, or further your podcasting efforts, feel free to reach out to me at Lewis at Podcast Domination, or you can reach out to my team and ask them some questions. Hello at podcastdomination.co. Both are .co. Just make sure that's, uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, I'll see you on the next episode. And until next time, keep dominating.